All right, so um, this is my first time recording a video. I'm doing it with my phone camera, and um, like I don't have a stand or anything, so it's just gonna be super shaky. But what I wanted to talk about is um, on David Bowie's album Let's Dance. I was listening to it the other day, and there's a song on the second side called Criminal World that's apparently a cover, and I thought like David Bowie's version sounds pretty good, so I want to hear the original. And, um, the original is way, way, very, very good. I don't know why anyone doesn't talk about it. And it's by a band called Metro. Now, Metro is, um, three guys. Peter Godwin, Duncan Brown, and Sean Lyons. I, don't, I haven't heard of any of these people before, but, like, um, um... <laughs> Peter Godwin's has released a, uh, a single that was apparently pretty popular. And um, the Duncan Brown, too, released The Wild Places in the Netherlands. Unfortunately, like, Metro 3, as a band, released, like, three albums and then broke up within, like, two years. Which is a shame, because it's... <laughs> I love the album the original album Metro, which Criminal World is on. And, um, yeah. Unfortunately, like, Metro split up in 1982. So I'm gonna talk about the original Metro album, the self-titled one, which Criminal World is on. So it was released in um, 1977, which um, most people say glam rock has been dead by then. Mr. Bowie himself released Diamond dogs in um, 1974 and then abandoned glam rock for his next album young americans so metro released in 1977 got no like, acclaim at all and um criminal world was the lead single on that album but like the bbc banned it on the radio because of um sexual content which um I guess they're right. I'll talk about it later, but it, the entire album is a little, a lot sexual. Now, Criminal World, the song itself is like, I love the song. The guitar work is incredible. The Everything is incredible. The voices, the lyrics. I love playing it at high volumes in the car or at home because it, it just hits like a truck. Now, um, yeah, my interpretation of the song's lyrics, I love interpreting songs. I love lyrics and l lyrical storytelling. Everyone says I'm nerdy, but I, li I listen to Kendrick Lamar and stuff. Um, <laughs> so what I think the song is about is a drag queen who's like dating a reverse drag queen, drag king. I mean, a woman in a guy's outfit now the first lyric of the song is you never told me of your other faces another one is i think i see beneath your makeup and i believe like these two have been going out for a little bit but the the woman sees the man at a drag show or something i don't know why the woman would be at a drag show but <laughs> she sees her boyfriend in drag that's about it and um, the whole song is filled with this um, classic glam rock gender bending. Think Rebel Rebel or something where it's not really sure, like, the genders of the two characters. With lyrics in the chorus going, the boys are like baby-faced girls. And um, near the end of the song, there's the lyrics, I saw you kneeling at my brother's door. That was no ordinary stick-up. I'm well aware just what you're looking for. I am no ordinary. I am no ordinary. And I believe that the narrator, the woman, like, sees her boyfriend, like, <laughs> having relations with her brother. And um, she realizes that her boyfriend is bisexual. And she says, you know what? If you like men so much, why don't I um, be a man? So she does reverse drag you might have noticed already but there's like a ton of 
sexual content in these lyrics already. There's also lyrics like, Now I know about your special kisses. I'm not the queen, so there's no need to bow. Once again, I saw you kneeling at my brother's door. I mean, there are references to oral sex throughout the entire song, but I don't know how the BBC people could figure this out when it took me, like, months to come up with a meaning for it. I mean... It's not really that sexual of a song, it's just the lyrics. I mean, I can play the song around my mom in the car, and she she loves the song. My entire family likes the song, mostly because I have no like, reading or listening comprehension skills. So, yeah. The song is really, really good, and I don't know why it's so underrated, but, like... There's also the David Bowie cover, which we can discuss that now, if it's better or not. Um, I guess it's kind of... I have a mixed opinion about it. The Let's Dance version has Stevie Ray Vaughan on guitar, and he does a fantastic job, which um, I can't really compare the guitar works on both songs, because they're both so different, but they're, both of them are pretty good, and I love listening to them. Now, I think the thing I dislike the most about David Bowie's cover is that he changed some of the lyrics to be less gay. And the entire song is pretty gay. So I don't know why... Like, it removes a lot of the things that make the song as good as it is. It waters it down. But I guess... um. Let's Dance was in 1983, so this was the David Bowie straight era. And the persona that Mr. Bowie had for Let's Dance and for the early parts of the 80s was just like, ladies, man. He loves women, women love him. He's blonde, he wears a suit, he sings pop. And like... Like, I really dislike 80s Bowie because of how, like... He turns his back on, like, on his status as a gay icon, even though the 1980s was a time of very much strife in the gay community with an AIDS epidemic. Freddie Mercury died in that era, too. <laughs> um, so there's a bunch of other songs on the album, too. And they're all pretty good, not just Criminal World. And, like, these are super underrated as well. Genius doesn't even have the lyrics for most of these, so I have no idea what they're about, but they're probably about the same, um... <sighs> they're all about, like, the 70s and gay stuff and sex. So, um, the second song was on the album is called Precious. It also has no um, playtime, even though it was released as a B-side to Criminal World single. So um, the song's about like some fortune teller lady or something that he has or attempts to have an affair with. It's a pretty good song too. It's pretty um, soft, but it also has good guitar work. My favorite album is the my favorite song on the album is the third and fourth ones, which is Overture to Flame and Flame. So Overture to Flame is completely instrumental, and it's a really good guitar piece. I'd recommend listening to it. And then the song Flame itself, which Overture to Flame um, transitions into, is about this um, sexually experienced girl that the singer is like having starting a relationship with. And this girl, like, lost her virginity pretty early on. There's lyrics like, I know the stains on your sh satin skirt come from another lover, and if it wasn't for your surgeon's skill, you'd be three times a mother. So the girl is, like, super promiscuous. And, um, it's a pretty sad song, actually, because it's pretty messed up. We don't know how old this girl is. She could be, like, like younger than 18. 
she could have lost her virginity younger than 18. And another song on the album I really like is um, Black Lace Shoulder. I, I don't know what it's about because once again, there's no lyrics online. But it's like, it's pretty fast paced and it sounds good, which all songs probably should. Um, so the entire album in general is like pretty, I like it a lot. It really feels like I'm hanging around a bunch of shady people in the 70s. Unfortunately, I'm a Gen Z kid, so I don't know what the 70s is about is was actually like. But considering how like how much it fucked up the economy, I'd imagine it's something like this. Now the entire album is actually once again really sexually explicit. I can kind of understand why the BBC didn't like it. <laughs> but like nowadays like se sexual explicitness doesn't matter. I can turn on the radio and hear songs about like people having hardcore sex with three different women at once and this entire band metro is way better than they should be and they're way too like underrated i wonder why people don't talk about them i mean it's it's no longer the 70s or 20th century mary whitehouse is long dead we don't care about sexual explicitness and I don't really feel like the popularity is going to increase anytime soon, which is kind of why I'm making this video to my um two subscribers. So the album got added to Spotify like last November, which is pretty good. I'd no longer have to upload the MP3 myself. And I think um even though it dropped in 1977, which is after the soap claimed death of glam rock i believe it's an essential glam rock album it has everything that glam rock albums should have like the gender bending lyrics good instrumentals two guys in suits in the cover and i really want to buy this album but it's no longer the 70s i can't find it at like record stores like um, Amoeba or whatever and I don't think I'd be able to find it in a bargain bin or whatever because I read lyrics on YouTube that like oh yeah I found this album back in the 70s in a bargain bin and I bought it and it was way better than I thought it would be but unfortunately like if I go online and try to buy it it's either completely out of stock or it's like hundreds of dollars I'm not paying hundreds of dollars for it. No long, no matter how good the album is, I'm not paying hundreds of dollars for like 12 songs about sex. And yeah, what I mean to say is this album is way better than it should be. And I, it's a shame how underrated the entire Metro band is. And I believe that we should be able to bring it back, you and me and... This is my first video, so I'm not really sure who it's going to, but it's on Spotify. You can listen to it anytime. You can play it in the radio. You can play it to your dog. You can play it to your parents. They won't notice if they have half as much literacy and comprehension skills as mine do, then they won't notice. So um, I guess that's about it. Thank you for watching. I'll um I'll try to get a stand next time for my phone because you can see how much I'm vibrating intensely. So um yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks again.